Dr. Jensen, in terms of antioxidants, what happens when we eat an apple? First, it would depend on whether you peel your apple or you oh, leave the peel on. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> a lot of the antioxidants in an apple are in the peel. Hmm. And if you peel the apple, cut it in little pieces, and it starts turning brown, you will actually already have removed some of the good antioxidants in the peel, and when it starts to turn brown, uh, the antioxidants will have been oxidized and neutralized before you eat them and get them in your body. Oh, so if it's been sitting around for a while, right? it's just food but not with any real value. Well, it's not still, anti the fiber. <laughs> yeah. still the fiber. <laughs> but no antioxidants. Okay. So what happens beyond that? You eat an apple. Well, so that's before you even start eating it. Mm -hmm. When you eat it, you will um, get the fairly immediate benefit of antioxidants that are freely available, readily available to be absorbed and get into your cells and protect your cells. Okay. The next step is that when you chew the apple and swallow it down into your stomach, the, all the enzymes, both in your mouth and in your stomach mm -hmm. and in the early part of the intestinal system, will start breaking down uh, some of the components of the apple and release another wave of antioxidants that you can then really? absorb okay. as a second wave. What happens from that point? I mean, what about things like the pH of the stomach and that kind of thing? Right. The pH of the stomach also will help uh, in the whole process of the pH and the enzymes working hand in hand. We have several pH changes that work with certain group of enzymes mm -hmm. to further break down some of the harder components to become uh, easily available and then be taken up into our bloodstream. All right, and from that point? From that point, two things can happen. What has not yet been digested will go on through the intestinal system and will uh, get to the point where our gut flora mm -hmm. uh, can have a chance of fermenting mm. some of those components. Which and it in, needs to do. Which it needs to do. And in some cases that will lead to another wave, depending on the food and mm -hmm. depending on your gut flora, mm. will lead to another wave of antioxidants, a third wave. So you have what's easily available right when you eat something. Okay. There's what the pH changes and enzymes are releasing so you can take stuff up into your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And then there is the uh, microbes that are fermenting your, the rest of your food and can lead to a further release of antioxidant components that is maybe eight hours after you ate the food. What can go awry here that it doesn't happen like it should? Okay, I know we tell our kids this. If you don't chew your food properly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And if you are taking antiacids on a regular basis, mm, okay. or if you are very stressed and you are not producing the right enzymes at the right time, mm -hmm. if your liver is under a lot of stress and you may not be producing the right digestive enzymes um, released by your gallbladder, or, very important, okay. if your gut flora is out of balance. So this is critical, isn't it? I think it is critical. Especially today, we have many problems related to that, don't we? Yes. Okay. Um, what can be the positive impact of getting the antioxidants in there and having the right flora? I'm not sure if I'm asking the right question, but I know it's all connected with having the, the right flora, correct? The impact of the gut flora has been best studies with stu mm -hmm. has been best studied with polyphenols, which okay. are some of the antioxidants. Uh, so I'm moving a little bit away from uh, just the example with the apple, mm -hmm. but for example from some of the very dark colored berries, mm -hmm. and uh, like choke berry, a blueberry, okay. um, black raspberry has has been studied a lot for its antioxidant capacity. Uh, so when we get into the polyphenol type of antioxidants, mm -hmm. uh, the, it has been studied in terms of these separate waves of immediate 
mm -hmm. secondary, and then what may be released by uh, the fermentation by the gut flora. And I think we still are just beginning to understand the impact of that. All right. I think we have so much work still to do in terms of understanding how different probiotic mm -hmm. strains may help. We don't know yet which ones are the most efficient in terms of helping release antioxidants at that phase of our digestion. Thank you, Dr. Jensen.